Hello guys and welcome to Mark Shim Tanks. I thought today for a change right we would go outside and we'd have a look to see what is available because there's lots and lots of free food outside at the moment. And I thought we could go out and we could maybe find stuff on make like a shrimp kebab. Of course for the shrimp, not for us to eat. Let's see exactly what we can find just as we go out the door here. Now this is my drive here. No, it doesn't look like a drive, but this is actually a turning circle and it's actually chipped. It just is f so full of weeds it looks like grass. And look at the ground here, right? What do we see? We see um, dandelions for one. Right, so let's have a little look at these dandelions. We have a bucket with us because I'm expecting to find quite a lot of stuff. Let's have some of these ones here. You see them? Dandelion leaves. Dandelions are edible and good for shrimp. Right, so we're going to take a few different varieties of them here and guys they get the name dandelion from the name for I think it's I do believe it's the French word for um, lion's tooth kind of looks like a lion's tooth what else do we have here I have nettles here just by the side of the house and this is by design I put nettle seeds here but we're going to give them a miss because when I did this I didn't really think um, our house is made from lime on the outside of the wall here it's an eco house and there is a bed of lime along the base and I'm not sure if that is shrimp safe right so I've never used them what else can we see tons and tons of dandelions any kind of flowers there's a good one over here we'll go and check out red berry there's an abundance of these let's have a little pick of them we can give the shrimp a few of these you think guys uh, gooseberries here let's see are, are any of these ones ripe gooseberry I think these are called gooseberry I can see one or two on here the fact that it took me a little bit to take that off the Vine leads me to believe that it's not ripe. I'm just going to taste it. Oh, it is so good. So these are actually ripe, but they're a little bit hard to come off. This year has been um, a little bit weird in the garden because um, it's only the middle of July, but most of the plants are finished with the fruiting season already. Look at this blackberry bush here. Look at this. Lots and lots of blackberries. These ones are not my favourite because they're a little bit sour. I'm going to taste one. Mm. Not my favourite. Blackberry. These are raspberries. Again, the issue with raspberries this year was... Um, because it's been so dry, a lot of the raspberries have just dried up completely. Let's see if we can get one or two. Look how small they are. They're not, not normally meant to be like this. I can see one or two at the back. Let me put the bucket down. We're going to grab one or two that haven't dried up completely. Way back here, you see them? I don't know how we're going to give these to the shrimp, but look how small these are as well. I think this is because of the lack of rain. Uh, yesterday and today is the first time it's really rained in probably about two months with thunder and lightning yesterday as well so it was kind of cool something else I'm going to try guys as well is um, I had a cup of raspberry tea last year made from these leaves and it tasted quite good right so we're gonna pick one or two of them off one of the ones from the top raspberry leaf tea All I do with this is I let it uh, steep in boiling hot water for five, ten minutes. I add sweetener because they can be a little bit bitter. bitter. And uh, you can drink it as a tea. The other thing I have done with this before, I have tried to use these as a shrimp food because I've seen other people use them, raspberry leaves as a shrimp food. I mean, look how much I have here. I have loads and loads of them. But my shrimp never go for them. Um, but I've seen other people... I use them and the shrimp go nuts for them. So I'm not sure what is I'm doing wrong. I've tried blanching them, microwaving them, still the same. I've even tried drying them as well. So we have some raspberry leaves for me. 
Uh, is there anything over here? Lots of little flowers. I'm not sure what these ones are though. Flowers are normally good. Let's just see if I can take the just the flower. See the thing with flowers as well is I'm not sure what this is so I'm not exactly sure if it's safe. You know if the rest of the plant is safe so what else? Lots of flowers, different types here, white ones. Beach little beech tree, I use them in the fall. I don't know what this yellow one is either, that looks quite cool. You see it? Uh, what else? Right, are these... I'm not sure if I did this last year with these. Are these horse chestnuts? That's a horse fly right there. I just flew away. Something squealing over there in the woods. I don't know what that is. That's strange. Anyway, I can't see any chestnuts on this though. Or is this a chestnut tree? This one and the other one over there is a horse chestnut. Horse chestnut, these are bigger. Right, in the greenhouse we have um, some plants. They're a gherk, um, cucumber, but they're not ready yet. We have some cabbage. Should we try a cabbage leaf? Let's go in here, get a cabbage leaf. To remember and come in here and water these plants down here. Maybe they won't need it today. But as you remember, guys, this actually collapsed uh, last year. Let's see what leaf will I take. I don't need a big one, just a small one because we're going to do it's going to be like a, a shrimp kebab type thing. Maybe another one, maybe a small leaf if there is any small leaves. The wife told me to come in here as well and look for caterpillars, so I have to remember and do that as well. I haven't done any of the greenhouse, look how bad this leaf is, like, been bent to bits, but it's good enough for the shrimp. I haven't done any videos of the greenhouse tubs this year because I didn't set them up, but last year they were a little bit of a uh, waste of time. Just spotted a little frog in the grass here. Let's see if we can capture him. For you guys. Straight hide. Let me just wet my hand, of course. Should I be a wee sneaky bugger? I thought I saw another one there. Look at this little guy, isn't he cute? A little fat bugger. There'll be lots and lots of little insects for him. Oh! You don't want to go with us, do you? <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get him out of here. Let's see. Will you go in here? Maybe if I put this to the side, he will kind of <laughs> be crushed by all this stuff. <laughs> Poor little bugger. Come on, there you go. There you go. I can't pick him up because he's on a hard surface. What will we do, guys? Will he be coming home with us? There you go. There he is there. Right, so what else is here? I actually noticed another little frog here, so... They must be out in force because the ground is wet. Uh, one I've always wanted to try, guys, is dock leaves. They're called dock leaves in Scotland. I'm not sure what the actual na proper name of the plant is, but there's lots and lots of them growing around the side of the greenhouse. So we're going to take one of these leaves here. This is a dock leaf. This is something that in Scotland um, that was used if you got brushed with nettles or something on your on your leg you break this and rub it in to kind of cure it we have uh, peas here they seem to have been flattened a little bit by the the rain there's quite a few different things we can take off this we could take um the, some of the leaves i think you could, the leaves are edible so let's do that shall we shall we Oh, my back. These uh, pea pods are quite big actually, so... I 
always de-skin them a little bit. I might keep the skin because I actually like to eat these as well. Look at this, isn't that wonderful? Oh, just drop one. Hmm. Those are good. This is all I will need for all my shrimp, by the way. Let's take a leave. I'm only taking small bits because I don't want to. This is actually a lot of food for the shrimp. Here we have uh, spinach. You guys all know about spinach. Let's try something here as well. Let's take one of these stalks. I don't know if this is edible at all. It might be, so we're going to use this. We're going to get a couple of small leaves. Now this stuff is uh, growing really, really well. I only need one or two leaves for all my shrimp because we we already have like an abundance of food already. I'll probably put on a, a counter up in the corner here somewhere how much stuff we've actually collected. Uh, this is a Swiss chard, I do believe, the red one. Let's try and get a decent looking leaf. I don't need the leaves to be big, that's why I'm looking for some of the smaller types. Uh, what do we have here? We have zucchinis. We have the actual zucchinis themselves. And we have the flowers, right? So um, if you have lots of zucchinis like this, where you have lots and lots of them growing, and you see you have an abundance of flowers, it's okay if you take the odd flower for your shrimp. My wife often um, will give me all the flowers that are spent like this, and they will, they, they will be dried and they're good for shrimp food as well. But my shrimp also like this dog, right? So just for a demonstration, we're going to take the actual flower. Let me choose this one here. Look this, because this is an awesome food for for shrimp. Got all the little flies in this one, see? It's literally crawling. Ugh, get those beasties off me. They're wee, wee beasties. Let's see. I already have zucchini in the house. Another frog there diving away. Let's see if we have any zucchinis in here. I can see some of the yellow ones over here and some of the round types. You see them? But these are just starting to grow to a decent size. See, this, these ones are probably edible at this size. See them? But I already have some in the house, so I'm not going to pick any of these. Um, you could feed the shrimp the zucchinis like like this you can cut them into little strips feed them kind of fresh skewer them feed them fresh or you can um, dry them all right what else do we have here just looking around is there actually anything else nothing we can take from the zucchinis some of these little round ones we have in the house as well so i'm not going to take them we have sweet corn here, growing, never grew sweet corn before, but it's actually flowering, which is quite cool, you see it? Never had, never even seen sweet corn before until my wife got these, so. Of course our plants are tiny, it's just been a really, really dry summer. Uh, what else? Of course there's one that we always forget about, and that is the humble stinging nettle. I'm going to go back over here though because I know there's a decent patch of stinging nettle over here and I like to pick my stinging nettles as far away from um, anything I've ever done because some, I don't use pesticides but pesticides might be used near where I am and in this patch here we also have um, mint right, but you can tell which is stinging nettle here this one of course is flowered Maybe we should try and get some of the leaves off this stalk here because it'll be easy for me to grab. You know these ones here? If they sting me too much, please. So the way you're meant to do it is grab the the leaf and pull it up towards yourself so the little spines don't get stuck into you. There's two, that is all I'm going to risk. 
doing in the center there you can see the amount of mint you see it across there I'm not sure if you can use mint so I'm not going to try and use it let's go around the house and see if there's anything else I'm not sure there is we will have a look all the same lots of those little yellow flowers rhubarb here that has really really struggled because it's been so dry again look how dry the grass is over in the field there you see as I said we've had like two days of rain in the last two months rhubarb we can't use although mm, the thing with rhubarb right, is it's meant to be the oxalic acid in it that is meant to be bad for you but there's also oxalic acid in a lot of the vegetables we eat so I'm not sure if it's, you just can't eat this raw if you cook it it's okay who knows I'm not sure 100% sure I think this plant here is chamomile um, which is okay for us but I think it is a mild sedative and I'm not sure how that would affect the shrimp but maybe you think guys we could take one of these heads because I think I think we might be able to just break one of these off near the top. I think the shrimp might like to eat this. And you never know until you try, I suppose. It's the same with those little yellow ones. But I know what this is. I don't know what the yellow one is, so that's why I'm not going to pick it. So we'll take one of the leaves. This one's got quite a big head on it as well. I'm trying to pinch as much of the green base off as I can. So we have a couple of Chamomile leaves with more stinging nettles. Can't really see anything else. By the way, guys, I am on my own here today for a little while, and I, I know a lot of you guys were asking me on Facebook why I said my wife had left me <laughs> and taken the kids. They're, they're away on kind of like a little trip, but they're coming back. I should have said that as well. What else is here? I can't really see much. That I don't know about. I think we have like uh, a vole or a mouse problem here. You see, you see something's been digging here. Um, again, plants I'm not sure about. I won't touch. We have um, apple leaves. There's a cherry tree over here. Let's go and have a look. I don't think there's cherries on it because we have. Uh, animals here, wild animals, they just eat absolutely everything off the cherry trees. Squirrels, birds, lots of apples here. Small apples, of course. Not quite time for them. I don't see any cherries in this at all. Not a single one. It's been picked dry. And so we can't use that. Willow. Oh, there's actually the raspberries here are a bit better than the ones over you see them they're much bigger yeah we'll get some of these ones too now, these ones are bigger much bigger uh, and believe it or not guys these might be bigger because um our septic tank runoff the water is filtered into a giant bed under here and it flows into all this right and these uh, willow are here to absorb all the impurities in it but you also get the benefit of having um, a big row of raspberries like this. Let's get a couple more. And this is like, it's no way like, you come over here, there's not like smell of um, pee or poo or none of that kind of stuff. There's no poo comes over here. It gets stuck in the ground and two giant septic tanks over here. So it's the wastewater runoff that comes over here. And it's like a fertilizer. You can, you wouldn't believe this, guys, but this, these willows were cut to the ground, probably three, four months ago. The owner of this house come along and cut, cut it right to the ground. So we have more raspberries, more raspberries. Let's see nothing else. Let me know in the comment section guys if you see something as well that I'm missing as I'm walking along here. 
Now I have thought about using willow leaves because I know they are meant to be uh, very very high in vitamin C but I've just never got around to testing it. It's one of those things where I've actually um, had a sore head and I've come out and I've actually chewed on a couple of these leaves to see if it helped with the sore head because it was meant to have like a mild anaesthetic property as well. But I can honestly say I, I, I not, I'm not sure if it does anything or not. The kind of thing with plants is you've got to be a little bit wary of the ones that have anaesthetics in them because they uh, they could kill your shrimp basically. Like if you, I mean, and something that has an anaesthetic in it might be okay for us in small doses, but you, when you have such a small animal, like a shrimp, it might be lethal to it, so that's the only reason I haven't tried it yet. Alright, so I think we're coming to near the end. I don't really see anything else. Lots of these flower and head things. I don't even know what they are. They remind me a little bit of the thistle in Scotland. You see them? The smell is absolutely wonderful, actually. I don't know what these are. Someone in the comment section let me know what these are. Mm, they're beautiful. See another little frog down there. Alright, this is our compost heap. Anytime I go fishing, this is where I head to remove some of the compost and it's full of worms. Lots and lots of nettles back here. Excuse the train. Green cargo. So this is where all of our compost goes here. We often see wild animals here as well, like uh, deer, squirrels, etc. I don't know what's happened to the squirrels. There's quite a few baby ones hanging around here. They were actually coming to the house and we were feeding them, but they've disappeared as well, so... I'm not actually sure how well this is going to come out on camera, but we, I can show you where the squirrels were living. Let me see. Um, there you see about halfway up this tree. I'm not sure where the, the, the camera is looking compared to where my finger is. But it's up this tree there, there's like a big ball of sticks. You see them? On the branch there, that is a squirrel nest. I don't know if any of them are still here, any of the adults. Let me show you this over here. As well. This is my um, older country. It has a lot of good ones on it this year. There's lots and lots of them. This, there is some we've actually missed from last year. You see them like this? It's all good stuff for the shrimp. All good stuff. You see them here? But these will be totally washed out. The other thing, guys, um, I wanted to ask you guys as well. People that are more into gardening and stuff will know this. Just because we're here, right, I'm going to ask you. Um, this plant here, right? I know this is a type of dandelion. This is also a type of dandelion, but they look very different, don't they? I wonder if this is a different type of dandelion or if this is just like a different type that's because it's grown near the house or less water or whatever. This looks like a salad, doesn't it? A salad type thing. Let me start, put the kettle on first. Welcome you guys, you want a cup of tea? Let's see, I'll take that one out just now. What do you guys prefer, by the way? And do you like cups of tea? Do you like herbal tea? English tea? This is what we have here. We're going to stick this kettle on. And then we're going to plate up. My wife would be so proud of me if she was here. <laughs> right, so we're going to plate up. We're just going to see what we have in this bucket here. I've got the knife was in there. Probably could have done quite a bit of damage to my hand. All right, no frog. Right, so, do you guys reckon this is enough for me to live on? As a, we've just collected enough food here. Oh, I thought that was a frog or spider or something moving around. Right, so we have our raspberry leaves. Let's get these ones out here first, because I'm going to have a cup of tea with them. I'm hoping they taste as good as they did last year. Right, so, I don't like the bitter taste in a lot of things, so I have to put sweetener in. Two is enough. And let's see what we have, right? We have dock leaves, 
this uh, plant is edible. A lot of these plants that you get in your garden, guys, are um, plants that were used um, for, for hundreds and hundreds of years, right, for salads. But they became unfashionable. Right, so I'm pretty sure this one is edible. We have Swiss chard. Let's see how we're going to do this. We have some skewers here. How many tanks? I'm going to, I will try in hmm, any, many, many more. Three tanks, right? We'll do it in three tanks. So we have three skewers. I'm going to show you how we do this. Okay, so we're going to need to cut stuff into pieces. One, two, three. Now I'm not going to get rid of this stuff, but it's just to make it easier as we go along. Okay, so we have a piece of Swiss chard. One, two, three. And my plan to do this, guys, as well is we, we will... Um, probably microwave this lot. I'm not sure if it's going to be possible the way I want to do it or if I have to put it in water. But we're, we're going to test it and see anyway, okay? I can't really... Or can I cut this? What do you think? How do I do it? So I give them all a little bit and there's loads of little bugs and beasties in there. Bugs and beasties and whatever else. Actually, let's, let's do this as we're going along just to make it easy. make it easier and by the way as well guys um, I won't leave this in more than an hour I'm not going to I'm not going to like pollute my tanks with stuff so La -da -dee 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 -dee. so I hope you're all having an absolutely awesome day whatever it is you're doing there you go there kettle is ready. It makes you wonder guys right, where, how much of this you could actually eat if, if you had no other food. You know how like we all rely on shops and stuff etc. How much food is actually outside that you could eat yourself. Right, so let's get this in here into our raspberry leaf tea. And I'm going to leave this a good 10 minutes at least. And I'll let you guys know exactly how it tastes. I did do this before and I was actually quite surprised that it tasted good so uh, what do we have here? A little bit of cabbage leaf, let's split this one in half and move this a little bit cabbage, oh, cabbage leaf, let me split this, get rid of the excess get rid of the success, the successful thingamajig thingamajiggity Right, so I won't know for sure how many different uh, items we have. We'll probably do a little count at the end. We'll have a counter up in the corner as well. I don't think I'm going to be able to push a r <laughs> one of these berries through this without splitting it. Let's try. Oh, I did. Mark is like, is like God, God with a barbecue stick. This one might split because it's tiny. Oh, it's not splitting either. Win-win situation. Win-win situation. Let's put on the red ones as well, while we're here. And this is going to get minimal, mini, minimal, <laughs> minimal uh, microwave, I think, because it will destroy a lot of these fruit if we do uh, any longer. Uh, what do you think? Hmm. Who would have ever thought that I could do something like this? My wife said I can't cook and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm almost like a chef. Like a chef. I love these peas, by the way. Let's see, hope that this doesn't split because peas will typically split. Let's see? How does he do it? How does Mark Shrimp Tanks do this kind of stuff? This one, it did split, but it's staying on. Hanging on for dear life. Good, good. What will also be interesting, guys, is the uh, the shell. I'm going to put a bit of the shell on here. And what I specifically notice, mm, I'm going to eat this one, is um, a lot of the stuff that we have right, in, in our gardens that we use for fruit and vegetable and stuff. Specifically stuff like... Uh, Tomatoes. I noticed when we did shrimp versus tomatoes, 
um, that the shrimp did not eat the skin at all. Right? And the skin actually stayed in the tank for months and I actually I took it out eventually. And I'm wondering if it will be the same with this. There's something as well, by the way. If we had tomatoes, you could use a little bit of tomato, but I am pretty sure tomato leaves are toxic as well. So, just putting that out there for you guys that might not know that already. And let's see, we get this chamomile leaf, chamomile leaf, chamomile flower. This would be amazing if this goes on without splitting, and it almost has split. I think the shrimp will like the pollen out of this one. Let's split this bugger in half. Yes, the shrimp are getting a feast, literal feast today. Literal feast. Oh, it's nearly breaking this one. Hopefully it stays on long enough for us to get it in the war. Right, so we have um, our skinny, I'm going to just call it skinny dandelion leaf. This one's split as soon as I put it in. This might be a little bit awkward for this this one because it's so thin, you see it. Hang on. Let's see, I wonder if I fold it over and do it like that, it might stay on. Mm. As long as it hangs on for dear life, we are fine. Hangs on for dear life. I mean, have you ever seen anyone give the shrimp a feast like this? Shrimp feast, what we'll call the name of the video. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comment section below what you think I should name the video. Whatever is the most uh, thumbed up. Let me just cut this little nail. I think I could have got a bigger nail than this. What do you think? Whoever gets the most thumbs up, we will change the title to the name of the video that you suggest. How about that? This this has to be the smallest nettle leaf I think I've ever picked, ever. That one just fell off. This leaf is quite decent size as well, so I don't know how it fell off. I don't see a hole. Did I even put this one on? Maybe I'm, I'm hallucinating. See this little... This little bugger, what else do we have here? Right here is one I'm not sure about. What do you think? This is... What was this off of? This was the spinach blossom, wasn't it? Hmm, I'm not going to use this just because I can't see any benefit from it. And I'm not exactly sure. Let me see, do you think we could cut this maybe into a couple of sticks? Just enough for us to get on the skewer. I don't think I can. I think it's too thin. Shall we try it all the same? Yeah, it's too thin, I think. This one might be okay, blanched, like this. Maybe. Maybe one bit. The other bits are too thin. Uh, what else do we have here? We've already done... Cabbage, I think that was. Should we put a raspberry on? This will definitely fall a bit. Raspberry. Shrimper getting such a meal today. Right, and I have, I think, what, what is this one here? Is this spinach? Did we not put spinach on here yet? Did we put Swiss chard on? Is that what we put on? Let me see. Swiss chard. This cabbage. Oh, we haven't actually put spinach on it. Right? Just let's break this up. Three bits. Doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't matter about the size as well, guys, because I'm not going to leave this in the tanks. Because this this will definitely pollute your aquarium if you leave these in. Because it's, it's way too much food. Even like one bit here. Let me see. See, like one pea, that is enough for my shrimp for one day for a hundred odd shrimp so we're going to be a bit overboard with these skewers but it's just for a video just for today 
Right, and we have, uh, well, we have these little gooseberries. We only have three of them here, though. Let's put these on as well. These tasted quite nice, actually. I don't know what type these are. And they were actually hard to come off, so I, I was assuming that they weren't ready, but they're, they tasted quite nice and sweet. So I will put up a counter of the things that we have found. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve things from the garden that we could feed our shrimp. You could eat half this stuff as well, so. If you were like a vegetarian, I'm going to say tree hugger, but um, that's probably not the right thing to say because I'm actually, I like plants and animals and all this kind of stuff, so. I like to eat animals as well. Oh, the vegans are like, no, you mother effer, you can't say, you can't say stuff like that. So this has turned a little bit green, the water. Mm -hmm. We'll let it lie for another little while. We're going to quickly microwave these for, mm, I, I would imagine one minute would be the absolute most. So while... That is microwave, and I thought I'd show you this here. Right? Th this is some of the uh, zucchinis that we have uh, collected at the garden. This, I've used um, half of these yesterday in this uh, dehydrator behind me. But what we typically do with something like this right, is you can use... Uh, we grow so much of these, right? you can use them as a small size as well, because the time that we've consumed this, there's already another one that's grown to this size, this side, right? so let me just eat this wonderful... Mm. Mm. I'm not going to eat that though. Oh, the black ones are so sour. Just checking the spinach leaf for beasties because this is going to be in as well. Mm -hmm. Right on. What we do with these guys is we cut into strips. You cut the top off like this. I just did discard the top. And we cut it into little thin slices like this. Now my wife, being Hungarian, uh, she knows how to cook vegetables in all kinds of ways that you guys will probably never even heard of before, right? But one of my favourite ways that she does it is, uh, she, she does something with it where she puts a batter on these and it's got all kinds of spices and stuff in it and then uh, she coats them in breadcrumbs and then she fries them and they are, mmm, god these are delicious, right? So. I will use these in my dehydrator in a little while because I'm going to show you the ones in my dehydrator as well here right and they're halfway done these ones right so this is what they look like when they've been in the dehydrator for a little while and you can see with these ones guys they're still a little bit pliable so you can see that these are nowhere near ready for me to keep and preserve right so uh, what we do with these is they look like this when they start off one day later, they look like this. I have them on a heat of 50 degrees Celsius. This is my dehydrator here. And uh, what they eventually look like, guys, is this, this tiny little thing. They shrink down, they lose all the water. And you can put this into your tank. And let me see, some of the smaller ones might be good enough for us today. So that is another item that we can add uh, to our kebab skewer. Right, so there's three here. Let's put these back. These are not quite ready, as I said. You can see they're kind of squishy. The only, the only reason, excuse me, I'm burping a little bit there. The only reason that these are not still on in the dehydrator is for this video. Just because the dehydrator makes a little bit of noise. It's like a, a hair dryer. Right, so you can see the abundance of food that it is possible for you to get for free at your garden. Um, I don't put a lot of the, the back work into um, preparing a lot of this stuff, simply because my back is, is knackered, right? It's almost like it's finished. Um, I can't even dig like a meter of ground before my discs start to slip a little bit. But I do have suns that turn over the ground and uh, my wife, she takes care of all the planting and stuff, right? And there's things as well you could do when you have a bad bark um, to make it a little bit easier for you where you don't need to weed the garden, where you don't need to turn the soil over every single year, even though that does help. Um, and it's things like covering the ground when the season's finished, cover the whole ground in thick black plastic. Right? And by the time it comes uh, for the next growing season, you take the black plastic off, the ground underneath will have minimal weeds, most of the weeds will be dead. 
Uh, and the ground will be soft and pliable because it's not hard. It's not been weathered hard and loads of rain on it, all this kind of stuff, right? So it will be easy for you to turn over. I, as I said, I don't do it because uh, my back explodes, but luckily for me, my wife is fantastic with this kind of stuff, right? So let's go and get those skewers. I'll be right okay, back. Okay, so our little skewers are done, right? And something exploded in there. I think it might have been one of the raspberries, but the, all the raspberries are intact here. I'm not sure what that is there. Let's see, it was maybe one of these gooseberries. It might have, like, exploded and ejected all its seeds. That's what it looked like. Some of it has uh, dried up a little bit. But this is all, all good shrimp food, right? So let's get over here. Let me see, thumbnail time. And guys, the, the thing I'm hoping that this does here is stay in the tank. I hope it, when we put the skewers in there, actually, um, I hope it stays in the ground, basically. Right, so we'll try this first one here. Let's see. Good luck, sir. Hopefully none of it will break up. It's looking really good so far. I'm just hoping that it's not too buoyant that it will pull out the soil constantly. Or that will make a rather crap video. Crap. Crap video, he says. Right, let me see. I might have to put the plate down to do this with two hands. Because otherwise you're not going to see a thing. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, it's a bit harder than I thought. I didn't think this through, guys. I didn't think it through. Now, that is just in the soil. There's a good chance that this one will float out, I think. Please. Or maybe, you know, maybe we can put it into this thicker bed up here. Maybe, maybe his eyes, maybe his nose. Scottish slang there for you guys that are wondering what the hell Mark Shrimp Tanks is talking about. Right, that is one is much better. Right, so we're going to see what this is like. We have one more, one more skewer to go. This one's a thicker bed as well. Let's see what this is like. Now, first thing I do notice here is the raspberry. I noticed that on the leaves, it looks like it has a waterproof coating on it. Oh, you know, I'm just looking here at the soil and I can see baby. Uh, little white baby here and there's a little baby panda right next to it. So we're going to go into macro mode like we always do, guys, and I'm going to show you just how effective this is. Just for fun for today, these will be out of the tank, but probably within an hour. Let's see what happens.
So that is today's video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you will uh, like, subscribe and comment in the comment section below if you have any questions, please honestly, if you're having any shrimp problems, please hit me up with some questions, let me turn my hat around so you can see my beautiful face in this lovely light. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I've tried to make it a little bit um, different from what I normally do, just to keep it a little bit more entertaining, switch things up a bit. Oh, you know what I forgot as well is my tea, let's have a little taste and see what this is like. Oh, wow, it's actually very, very good. If anything, I think I put uh, two sweeteners was too much for this type of tea. I can't believe how good that tastes. Highly recommend this if you if you have raspberry bushes in your garden. Go out, collect some of the leaves. Okay, so again, thank you for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Happy shrimp, guys.